Hi guys, welcome to another Jonathan Trust Wildlife Artist episode here on my YouTube channel. Now, I thought I'd give you a little crash course on the stuff I use. Um, this will save you an awful lot of heartache, I can tell you, because when I first started, I bought myself one of those box sets of oils you get with bristle brushes and linseed oil and whatever, so maybe some thinners, and you don't really know what to do with it. And you get a right old muddle with it and a right muddy mess because you use too much linseed oil or whatever, and you think, well, what do I use linseed oil for? Well, to be honest, with you, I, I didn't know either when I first started. In fact, I don't use it at all. Um, so what I do do is use the alternatives to linseed oil and the alternative to turpentine, which actually is very smelly, and you may not like the smell. It's a great smell, I like it, but I don't use it. Now, what I do use, I use uh, Liquid Original, which is fantastic stuff. Um, the class is as fat, which means fat over thin, and I'll come back to that in a minute. So um, that's a great medium for smoothing the flow of your paint, so you can blend colours really easily. Although, quite frankly, um, you can use wet and wet oil paints, blend really nicely anyway, um, as long as you keep it um, flowing and they don't dry on you. Now, so all the colours that I use, most of them anyway, are Griffin Alkyd, fast drying oils. No matter what, they do a pretty good range. They tend to be slightly uh, more transparent, less opaque than perhaps normal colours that aren't, uh, don't have the alkyd medium in them, which is the fast drying medium. Um, the other ones I use here are uh, Winsor & Newton or whatever. Um, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. Just get used to a palette, maybe 13 colours that you enjoy and get on with. That's what most people, most professional artists have their master palette, if you like, 13 colours thereabouts. Um, and you can use your, um, your oranges, uh, Again, with all with Alkyd, they, they work really, really well. And as I say, dry really quickly, which is great. Are you going to you can hear those acorns crashing down again? It's very windy outside, and it's that time of year, so um, everything's coming down on the roof. Now, the other thing, instead of turpentine, I use Santador. Santador is a great medium, works very well with liquid, chemically balanced, whatever that means. I don't know, but they tend to go well together. That's instead of turpentine, and it doesn't smell either. It's not going to smell your house out if you haven't got a studio or a shed in the garden that you can paint. That's uh, good stuff, I use that a lot. Um, really, really useful. And I'll tell you the top tip here, that took me years to find this out. This is where I keep my white spirit. Now, it's got a little tray in the bottom of it, so when you put your brush in, it doesn't sit in the bottom, it sits up here. And what you'll get, you get a real sort of a residue of all that rubbish from oil or oils when you clean your brush, it sits there, but you don't have to throw the whole thing away. I can use that for about two months before I have to scoop out the muddy bottom and, and the bottom of it, and it's really, really useful. And of course, the top bit, well, I mean, I just keep, you can keep pouring it into another jar and reuse that white spirit if you want to clean it, let it settle. And I, I hardly use any white spirit. I hardly throw any away. It's a very, very uh, economical way and I guess a ecologically better way of using white spirit. Um, very economical. So um, I advise you get one of those. Absolutely amazing and a top tip. Brushes. Now, when you get your box set full of uh, bristle brushes or whatever you're gonna get, you think, what do I do with this brush? And you're getting a right old mess again. I use, and I've always been accused by many, many artists over the years of using very small brushes, but I do use small brushes. Um, start on a big painting, you start with big brushes and then you get smaller and smaller when you get some more detail. But I use soft brushes. I like soft brushes myself. That's just the way I paint. And I've always painted like that from day one. So I'm just used to it. And I don't spend a lot of money on brushes. I kind of like, you know, um, well, I don't clean them very well, and after about, well, one or maybe two paintings, it's time to throw them away and get another set of brushes, which um, I order on a regular basis. Palettes, well, a lot of people will get a beautiful palette, and they'll clean it every time, and make, make their own, fantastic. And whatever you get used to, really, I mean, that's a really good way of doing it, I have to say. But I've never actually got round to that, I don't know why, I'm always painting. So I don't experiment very much. Um, you should experiment with colours, and different colours, and mixing different colours. Do not get stuck with the same three or four colours in your palette. That's a bad mistake. You want to keep creating and experimenting. So, um, yeah, I use tear-off palettes. Here, you can only use one side. Very, very convenient. Usually lasts me a couple of days. Tear it off and move on. There's 50 on a, on a, um, a pad. So they last a long, long, long time. So there we go. Um, that's pretty much my setup. I use 2B pencils to sketch with. Um, maybe that's save that for another video. Um, sketching is really, really important. If you want to be an artist, a professional artist, a professional animal artist, I should say, or a wildlife artist, you should get used to sketching. Sketch in the wild, sketch really quickly. Teach your eye to look. It's all about looking. Sketching, 
sketching excuse me, is a lesson in looking. Don't forget that, that's a really, really important thing. The more you sketch, the more you learn, the more your eye gets better, you get hand-eye coordination, which you do as well when you're using your brushes on your canvas. The more, you can't teach that, you've got to practice. There's no shortcuts, I'm afraid. There are no shortcuts. I know a lot of our people have come up to me and asked me for questions, ask me for a masterclass, expecting to jump forward light years into the future of their career, make them a better artist. All you're gonna do is get up, pick up tips, which is great and really, really useful, and you'll find them here, right here on my channel. But all the best thing to do is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Even when I wasn't a professional artist and I was worn out and working all day, I'd actually be painting three or four hours a day. And if I didn't in the evening, if I didn't paint that day, I'd actually feel guilty. But I was loving it. The, the, the key, the key to being a successful artist is to enjoy what you do. If you don't enjoy it, then you're not gonna do it. And you, you won't improve, you won't get excited about your work and you certainly won't make a career of it. Paint what you love. Now I love wildlife, I've always painted wildlife from day one. That's exactly what you've got to do. If you love flowers, paint flowers. If you love people, paint portraits. Fantastic, but love what you paint. Love what you paint. So experiment with the colors, experiment with your brushes, try different mediums, you'll find your own way, but that's what I paint with and uh, been doing that for about 30 years. So anyway, uh, any more tips you want to see on my channel, there are lots of videos coming up and a few before of course, so please do like and subscribe, hit the bell and uh, I'll notify you when my next video is up for your next top tip on wildlife painting. Thanks a lot guys, all the best.